girl, Mama Mia, and on my left I have Taliban Shorty, your boy SK. And on my right I have Steve Lou, what it do? And tonight our special guest is Marie K. Did I say it correctly? Yes, you did. And she is joining us tonight. We are so happy to have you here. So um, tell our fans a little bit about how they can follow you on social media. Um, you can follow me at Marena K. That's M A R E N I K A E. It's the same thing for Instagram. Twitter, Facebook, and all that good stuff. I love your accent. Can you love say Twitter? Can you say Twitter again? Twitter. <laughs> One more time. Twitter. <laughs> Where are you from? Nigeria. Nigeria. I just came from the motherland. When? Where? Oh, uh, I was in Egypt. Oh. That's where I got my first garments from, man. So dope. Hey, man, I was in Egypt. I was like, man, you know what? It's American culture, man. This American clothes really ain't what I'm supposed to be wearing, man. So I started getting me some native garments and everything, man. Dope. You know, trying to get back to my, my roots, man. Obviously. Like I really know what I'm from in Africa, but still, man. It's, so, a, it's a beginning. It's a beginning, yeah. You know, it's right. You're working with it. You got to yeah, start man. from somewhere. Yeah, man. Y'all boys, y'all people wearing... Gucci and stuff like that. I'm finna start clowning y'all, man. Like, well, you can make get a Gucci one. You think they don't have no Gucci yeah. ones? What no colonizer shit, man? What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> but I love your hair. Thank you. That's just dope. Thank you. I love your music. Thank you. Yes. Well, you can tell she's an artist. Yes. She's all about girl power, mm -hmm. empowerment, and your song that's out right now. Yes. Um. So. We have, um, I'm sorry, you actually say something about myself, right? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> my name is Marina Kay. I'm from Lagos, Nigeria, and um, I've been in Atlanta for the past three years. My brand of music is called Afro Merge, and it's pretty much a combination of Afro pop music, neo soul, some AC, and some like electrical nuances. Um, the singles that are out right now, um, Smooth Operator is the American single. Giddy is the Nigerian single, and remember, Afro Merge version is the West African single. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that one. So I'm working in all areas all over the world. Yep, so you know. It's not from my phone. So Afro Merge, is it similar to like Afro Beat, like the, like the um, French Montana Unforgettables and the Drake One Dance? Or? No, I mean, those aren't Afro Beat. <coughs> what is um, I mean, Afro Beat is like Fella. Okay. Like that's, that's Afro Philly. Beat. Yeah, that's like... Okay pure afro beat um but it's it's um it's not like that it's more like using nigerian pigeon and um just regular english and just kind of mixing the words and um the 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 metaphors and the interpolations and stuff because for example smooth operator the american single the first line is that's my motto you can't chill on my motto motto in nigerian pigeon means car and it's something that we do in Nigeria. I do it here in America as well. I hate it when Nigerians do it, but I do it is you can be parked anywhere. You can come outside and people in Lagos are just leaning on your car, just chilling. Mm -hmm. And you're asking them like to move and everything and everybody give you an attitude, like why are you asking them? like this is my car, like, get off my car. <laughs> so that's where the the, um, the the first line of the song comes from. That's my model, you can't chill on my car. And I'm kind of using it as a metaphor. Kind of using it as a mod, like a metaphor for Step like. Bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a metaphor for like you know, kind of like disrespect and um, um, to not be underestimated. Um, the song has a lot of different layers. It deals with the whole concept of Ajabataism, which is what my album is called, Ajabata, and it's um pretty much like a mindset that children or children in Nigeria who are maybe privileged or who didn't grow up on like the streets and struggling and suffering somehow your Nigerian stories are less valid so um, that's why um. I created the album because it was like I mean that wasn't my experience it, I think I guess it's similar to like rappers here feeling like they have to pretend like they're from that the hood, hood. Mm, right. 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 so it's kind of like street that. cred exactly so my thing was like well I mean that isn't my experience and this is my experience and I'm not less Nigerian because you know I went right. to British primary school or because I went to a British primary school in Nigeria, you know. Right. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty much the, the main theme um, of the album. It's, you know, searching for identity. It's like um, all the songs are kind of written, very loose, like songwriting structure. You know, monologues and soliloquies. And, yeah, just kind of exploring identity as a young Nigerian millennial. What's your different experiences like in, like, uh, the music industry, like Nigerian music industry, British music industry, American industry? <laughs> well, I've never been to the British music industry, but Nigeria and America are very, very different. And um, 
It's so funny because when our Nigerian artists come here, they are kind of faced with how different things are. In Nigeria, business is very loose. Everything is very, you know, I know you, it's okay, you know, I can vouch for you. Oh, the money isn't here yet, but you know, I know you're bringing it, that kind of thing. Oh. Um, yeah, so like Nigeria, things are, are looser. Um, it's only been in recent times that people really started, um, you know, getting the USC codes for their songs and then, you know, copywriting things and stuff like that because, I mean, it, before it was only if you were huge, like, fell out huge, like you were able to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And as a result, there are like hundreds and thousands and thousands of Nigerian music that is like just unprotected because nobody could tell these people like, oh, this is what you need to do. So, so is Nigerian say, music different from the other African music, like the Afrobeats and all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, Nigerian music is different. I mean, first of all, just from the language alone, um, you know, Nigerian, uh, Nigeria as a country, we have about <laughs> 369 languages spoken in Nigeria, you know, so even though, I mean, I don't understand all the languages, but like, I can tell that this is a Nigerian language versus, you know, a Ghanaian one or, you know, a Cameroonian one. So, I mean, that's, I feel like is the, is the biggest thing, Nigerian music, you can, you can definitely tell like, you know, it's so it's over 300 languages? Over 369. So, how, uh, <laughs> my question to that would be like, so... Is there ever communication issue? Pidgin. Or like so countries like like Nigeria, where there's so many languages spoken, pidgin is like pidgin English, broken English is okay. like the way a lot of people who maybe who can't speak English they communicate through pidgin English, like Ebonics. Like is that sort of? Yeah, kind of like Ebonics, kind of like Ebonics with like language, you know. Just like or is it like say for instance like. You have Mexicans, and then you have like it's like, like Spain, people from Spain. It's Spanish somewhat, it's but it's like a different patois. dialect. Okay, it's like patois. Okay, yes, and it's Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so it's, it's, it's like patois. <laughs> 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 I know now. Now I know. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty much the biggest difference, yeah, mm -hmm. between Nigerian and American. You know, here everybody's all about their money. We need those checks cleared like immediately. Mm -hmm. Like you know, if you're using my music. You need to say here, here, and here. I mean, although like recently, in the past couple of years, we've kind of stepped up to that. But it's very, very recent. Mm -hmm. And I see that you like from watching your videos that you have your own clothing line and you express yourself through your clothing. Like, mm -hmm. what's all the inspiration? And by the way, I love all your outfits. Thank you, thank you. Um, well, I started just making stuff to perform in while I was here. And um, making my clothes. Yes. And um, you know, like performance clothes. You know, just because we would go to places and I was Nigerian and people were really interested. Like, oh, you know really do a lot with your culture and because I I at the time really didn't want to be like the African girl which is why I didn't mm -hmm. but like I guess with things and the views of like you know African music and you know Wizkid having that huge single with Drake and you know people being more accepting of the culture and being mm -hmm. interested and stuff I kind of felt like it was my responsibility as a Nigerian to represent Nigeria in my clothing and everything so when I would make the clothes for performances and stuff, like people would ask me, like, where do you, where can we get this, da, 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 and all of that stuff. So I decided to make my clothing line, Makan Giddin, for like all the people who would come to shows and wanted to wear what we would wear. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about your album a little bit. So, um, your album, how many tracks is going to be on? Well, um, there's an 11 track album and there's a 10 track album. One for here and one for. Yes. <laughs> And you wrote both of uh, all of both of them or what? Yes, I mean it's just um one song is missing in the Nigerian version and that was the original Remember that was produced by Cory Mo. So um that one was included like in the American version of the album because Cory Mo, you know, is a bit yes. how did you yeah. meet Cory Mo? I met him through my former publicist and she kind of just facilitated the meeting and you know we went over to his place and we you know got to play around and he was just really nice and accommodating and you know he, he gave me the number oh yeah the album right <laughs> yeah so yeah so there there an american version has 11 songs the nigerian version has 10 songs like i said the album is pretty much you know inspired by <laughs> nigerian Feminine, well, not feminist, womanist millennial angst. And um, I kind of just channeled like all the frustrations and just even dealing with my identity as a Nigerian in, in, in America mm -hmm. because something happens to your mentality. Like when I came here, I knew that African Americans were not lying because something happens to your mentality as a black person when you come from a place where 
it's me it's the norm like you, right? mm-hmm. you know where you are normal it's some there's something that happens in your mentality when you come here and I've actually me my my younger sister my family like I've seen friends family kind of just struggle with the whole identity of mm-hmm. like wow because you know where you're from everybody looks like you you don't have to think mm-hmm. about who you are mm-hmm. when you're in America who you are is always on your mind like who you are like you being black is just always constantly drummed into your head and the fact that you know black people also aren't um, being treated with any humane um, <laughs> respect or anything right. like More that. Right exactly you know you now have to deal so I ha- I'm coming from back home where you know, everybody looks like me, all the rich people look like me, everybody in power looks like me, and then I'm here where now I'm constantly reminded that I can be shot in the street at any time. Wow. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a different, mm-hmm. it's a different piece with that, with being around people who just all know the same ethnic background and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, so, that's definitely dope. So, how has that affected, like, has that affected your music any? It did. I love Atlanta culture. I love Southern culture. I love, like, <laughs> I love right the the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, it yeah. is. Yeah, I love, like, a traditional, like, Southern accent. Like, the old fashioned ones. Like, I literally, the way you, like, people come up to me and they're like, I want to hear you talk, that's how I sit next to, like, older Southern people. I just mm-hmm. want to hear you sing words. <laughs> just say, like, a lot of words and stuff. So, being in Atlanta actually influenced, um, a lot of my music, um, the Nigerian single for the summer that's going to be called, it's called Love You Right. It's yeah. actually called Love You Right. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of written with, um, kind of like, you know, typical Atlanta um, vernacular. That's what I'm going to call I it. Who produced it? Um, my Nigerian producer, Big okay. Yeah. So, um, but it's set against a super traditional African beat. So I love to play around with those juxtapositions and, you know, just really try to be experimental and give people something interesting. So. Who or what inspired your whole music background? And <coughs> Sorry, were you talking? I thought I was about to interrupt you. So I just oh, no, no, I was okay. saying, where did your inspiration come to get, like, start being in music, like your influence, like with your parents playing music yeah. all the time? My dad actually owned one of the first labels in Nigeria Okay. to start, like, like to start taking music like seriously, mm-hmm. like as a business. Um, one of the biggest Nigerian artists, um, Two Face Vivia, he had um, that African Queen song that was in that Monique movie. Yeah, yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So when he first started, my my dad actually discovered his group mm-hmm. and you know um, signed him, and they would you know do videos and record videos like in my house and stuff. But um, at the time when I was. I guess growing up and witnessing all these things, the industry wasn't what it was today. Mm-hmm. And um, there was also like this um, stigma that yeah. um, African artists or musicians weren't serious. Like you didn't do music if you were smart. You didn't do music if you were intelligent. Like you know, you didn't do music if you had options. Because we were focused on ed- being educated. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I guess kind of feeling that way and growing up in a musical family, I kind of took it for granted because like, well, everybody expects me to do music. I mean, so. I'm gonna go like <laughs> be a neurosurgeon or something. I went to school for criminology. I went to college for criminology. I didn't do anything music related at all. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, but music just kept I guess, calling, you. calling me. And um, everything I, like I would do would become a song, and I'll write verses and choruses. And I, like my, I would literally just my friends would not be like, just admit to yourself that you want to be an artist because they're like your subconscious artist is gonna crawl out of your mouth mm-hmm. <laughs> one morning. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I can do it. So that's why I kind of just decided to just throw my hat in there. Go for it. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because that was kind of like a similar feel to the way things were. You know, like in our age, you growing up, like if you wanted to be like uh, something creative, like a singer or a sports uh, player, something like that, it always kind of like, and you mm-hmm. can just get your education and mm-hmm. your nice nine to five job and things like that. But yeah, I feel old oh, when you said our age group. Nigga, you is old. Shit. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> but what I do like is that now, especially like in this time, is like. Well, right now we are at the bottom of like a party going on. Yeah. We got this girl, man, like yeah. film right now. After, after we finish the interview, we are going to the party. So, it's party, man. Oh, that's actually a way, but like I was saying, like now it seems like more with parents and people just in general, like 
being a creator, being open is cool now. Mm -hmm. If you want to be music, that's cool. It's more encouraged and separate. And what was weird about my situation was like my parents are both in the arts. Like my mom is a movie Damn, producer really? yes my dad owned the first record label he was a director Damn. he used to make so that's why so that's our it was exactly <laughs> but that's why everybody said it was weird because most people's parents don't want them yeah, to do it and everything right. but my parents were in music and were you know or, or in the arts and were successful in the arts so what did they push you to then um did they, or did they push you at all my you know you hear a lot of times parents would be like I'm good at this. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna force this on my kid. Mm -hmm. So they kind of like keep it from them to a degree. Mm -hmm. So with that well, similar to was your my dad. My dad was like a. My dad is like a British father. He went to secondary school primary. He grew up in the UK. What is a British father? Oh, He's he very distant. No hugs. No, you not affectionate. He's very yeah, not affectionate at all. He's very. You know, so I I did not look at my father as somebody that I wanted to be because. You know, he was just, I mean, we didn't have a relationship where you could talk to him and ask him questions or whatever. You were, you know, you're a child, he's a dad, you're supposed to view everything that's happening. Right. It wasn't like, come and talk to me and come and ask me things, right. you know. Like so, respect. exactly, right. you know, my father, even, even my, my father's mom, like, you know, my grandmother, very, no hugs. Like, she would like you to check on your birthday, you know, oh, hi over there That's you know so well not african my both my both my, my dad and his mom grew up in the uk yeah. so um they had that kind of british kind yeah, that's, of a, that's a british thing distance yeah definitely yeah. that kind of cold british kind of distant thing so my dad wasn't somebody that could ask or even ask what he thought about what i wanted to do or anything like that it was just like oh this is the father and this is what he's doing so my mom like i said was she produced shows she produced movies and stuff like that but you know she was very whatever you, you know you want to do as i got older and i went to college though she, as i was about to go to college she said to me like you know well if music is already naturally in you um she wanted me to just go study something else as a, back, a backup because you know if music is naturally in you you know it's, it's there you can always pull it out but if something happens you know you can't go and you know, learn uh, criminology, like, you know, like that. So it's best for you to just go to school, get your degree in whatever, and then just do music after. So that was kind of how that happened. Gotcha, gotcha. I wonder, is that like, just like a, I wouldn't say a foreign culture, mm -hmm. that you, how you were saying how mm -hmm. your dad and your mm -hmm. grandmother was, because my grandfather's from Bangladesh, mm -hmm. and my dad grew up in, a, in the household with that, and his mom was American, but, mm -hmm. Like a lot of my grandfather's culture and just a lot of stuff in his background, my dad, I'm like, you know, when we asked him questions about mm -hmm. stuff, he didn't have an answer. And I'm mm -hmm. like, well, why didn't you ask him? Mm -hmm. He was like, I don't know. You know, we just didn't mm -hmm. do that. Yeah. We just, you know, he was our dad. He would go to work, come home. He'll cook, mm -hmm. you know, interact with us a little yeah. bit. But other than that, you didn't ask him. Well, my dad is too. like a snobby, like, my dad is like, he had like a white daddy in the 60s. So he mm -hmm. was like, he's like, refined and all of that that stuff and um yeah it was just not a situation in which he was doing so many and i only realized now as an adult how many amazing things he did growing mm -hmm. up but there was never a relationship in which i could even because they pulled you in close yeah, yeah ask him or say you know oh you know you're doing all these amazing things you know <laughs> that's true on yeah. another yeah. note so Okay, so you're in these <laughs> different markets. Fuck that. No, 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 no. I did not say it. You did not. You did not. You will not be quoted. Since you have these different cultures, um, different artists, mm. who do you want to collaborate with that you haven't co collaborated with in internationally and in America? Oh my God, there's so many people that I want to collaborate with. In Nigeria, I really want to write with Don Jazzy. He's like a musical genius. He's a person, one of he, yeah, he was one of the first people who started the Afro sound that we know of now, the Whiz Kid sound, you know, the Davido sound. People that are really popular. Mm -hmm. He kind of started that off, like when I was in high school. Back then, people were still, you know, doing fella type Afrobeat music and stuff, and he came and you know did combine R and B with. African beats and evil music and all of these different things. So I mean, writing with him would be like you know amazing. Um, Kendrick Lamar here for sure. Okay. Um, right. Kendrick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love Kendrick. He's 
amazing. I love how he arranges his music. I love all the other things that are kind of happening in the background. And yeah. The way, you know, like actually his delivery inspired my delivery for this album because, you know, I love how he played around with his tones and all the different things that he does with his voice, not even being a singer. You know, he can mm-hmm. convey all this like emotion. So um, I kind of put that into, um, you know, this album and, um, you know, kind of played around with that. And I just felt like I could do it because, you know, Kendrick does it. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Yeah. So who are you listening to right now? Huh, who am I listening to right now? I'm gonna laugh. Um, nonstop for the past few weeks. Spice Girls. The old Spice Girls? Mm-hmm. Is it any new Spice Girls? No. Oh shit, what old? No. Mel B. Mar jumped into them studio. Oh, yeah. oh, shit. Well, I think Spice that she's girl. the reason. Who was? They were trying to get back together, but was it Mel B. Or was it? Um, it no. Was uh, sh- yeah. Yeah. Mel B. Yeah. still bad. Like bullshit. Yeah, she's my favorite. Um, that was her list, though. <laughs> well, he beat her somewhere? No, I'm no. Sorry, let me start with herself. No. Rumors and stuff like that. No. Yeah. I, I, I didn't believe that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I get Mel B and uh, Nicole Murphy mixed up sometimes. Does that make sense? I do understand that. You understand that? Mm-hmm. What is that? Light skin. Light mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Is Mel B light skin? Mm-hmm. Is she? <laughs> Anybody can They both was with... Um, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy smashed both of them? Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Shit. Not only they're both two they They're both his baby mama. Shit. Eddie Mar- Murphy got Eddie raw. He's living. Him. He's huh? living his best life. I'll say. <laughs> Damn. For real? Okay. Yeah. Where were you? Hey, man. I, I you, you were in the motherland. You, you were in the motherland. Yeah. Yeah. He denied Mel you know, B's baby, all of that mm-hmm. stuff. Did he really? He yes. It was dropped. Holy shit. Damn. It was real in those streets. <laughs> I was saying, but then you were not. Uh, not like him. I don't use no. The like professor chicks must be winning for real. He got like, a lot of chicks coming to America. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Beverly Hills Cop, the Larry is like. But um, Nicole Murphy um, didn't he pay her like he told her he was gonna give her a million dollars for each kid that she had back when they were like together. She deserves yes. Uh, yeah. Her vagina. Oh my god. She has five kids. Yeah. Yes. How? What do you mean how? Because he was fat. Yeah, no, I drove like six percent body fat. Okay, and she got the money to make it like. Yeah, that. But she has great genes. Yeah. She was great before the kids. Though. She yeah. Was great after. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Five kids. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Who do y'all think look better, Nicole Murphy or Jada Pickett Mama? I seen a picture of Jay Pickham Mama before. Nicole yeah, Murphy. Yeah, yeah, she was in a bikini or something. Yeah, she yeah. had like an eight pack. Nicole yeah. Murphy. For sure. You see, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, I've never seen Jada's mom. Where you been at? Yeah, Jada's mom is doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't see it. You should not see it. You gotta be on time, man. You won't be on twenty shit. Man. Says the person who didn't want to know what was the connection. I just didn't know the connection. I mean, I told you, I hit the head a lot. CTE mm. shit, man. Oh. You might need a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got CT. You definitely got CT. So, <laughs> move around long. We have a little game we want to play today. Oh, no. Oh, oh shit. Oh, oh, get your knees. <laughs> get your knees. Get your knees. We're going to get you in the bag. Oh. So, we get in this bag. Put it's going to be. Yeah, oh. it's going to be different things to do in this bag. Oh. Tell you, you got to be brave now. Get on camera now. Okay. Once you get in the bag, it ain't no backing out. Okay. Only way back out is to die. Okay. Can I plead the fifth? I'm up. Any mama meal, let mama me read that thing. I don't want you to alter and cheat. Uh-huh. Yeah, man. Uh-huh. Pass them out, show that's how you cheat, man. We get them to cut shit out, man. No cheat and laugh. Is my kid like this? What? I shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Quiet. What is the dopest yeah. party you ever been to? <sighs> the dopest party I've ever been to. I went to Quilox in Lagos in December. Where's Lagos? Lagos, Nigeria. It's like the capital. My boy was telling me to come to Lagos. Yes, go there. He yes. said that's the spot to go to. That's where I live, for sure. He said, well, so we got mm-hmm. what's happening. Mm-hmm. So he wouldn't bullshit me. Yeah. And the parties, bruh, <laughs> Nigerian parties, I was, this was the night before Christmas. So, not this year, the year before. The the day before, the night before Christmas, Christmas Eve. And everybody is driving out of the club at like 4 o'clock in the morning. 
and there's now just traffic on the whole like stretch of the street you know <laughs> so in true nigerian fashion we're like at a standstill people literally got out of their cars and started playing like everybody went to you know 93.7 cool fm and started playing music and people were just out of their cars just like dancing like on the streets like on their cars hey. at three o'clock in the morning well it was christmas day now three o'clock in the morning on christmas day Wow. So yeah, <laughs> wow. the giant parties are live. They won't end till like people get home at six, seven a.m. I have been out and Shit. I have come back at eight o'clock in the morning. That's my old That's landlord. Like, uh, <laughs> Jamaica, pasta, pasta. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly like that. Yeah, that, that's. So you just got the land three years ago, right? Mm -hmm. So back in my day. Mm -hmm. We ain't stop parties like nine o'clock in the morning. Like you leave one twelve, the sun be coming mm, up, people F be going inside. Yeah. I was told that you guys used to do that until they started saying they changed. Yeah. yeah, they yeah, changed the, the whole bucket much, area, man. and yeah. now it's like a whole Rodeo Drive down there, and they just totally flipped it. I ate this food in the club. It was some Nigerian food. I don't remember what it was called. It's like some plantains and some Ooh. beef. Suya. It's like on the uh, shish kebab stick. Suya. <laughs> Suya. Suya. Yes, it's called Suya. <laughs> Suya. This was old, even though it was spicy as hell. Yeah, everybody, oh my god, everybody loved, my white friend told me that he would sell his mother for Suya. Damn. People love Suya. <laughs> people love Suya. That's what white people should do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people do some shit. Yeah, I'm not still interior for a piece of food. Yeah, you know, it's the white that. joke that you're like, ha, 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 like you would never do, but you know, it's just mm. so funny. Yeah. I'm not telling my mother for Suya. Cultural question. Okay. You're Nigerian, mm -hmm. so you've been in land three years, so you didn't meet African Americans, mm -hmm. which whatever you want to call us, whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you notice a difference between just us versus, I don't say us versus y'all, but as far as Nigerians, Africans versus Black Americans? Like, I mean, yeah, first of all, y'all say y'all. In the right. south, yeah, in the yeah, south, south. Yeah. you know, y'all yeah. say Once y'all. Once you leave, like accents. Virginia, that cuts out. Like. Yeah, I mean, you know, of course, I mean accents, but I mean, as far as like, you mean like personality right. or, or looks or whatever. Personality, looks, anything. <coughs> um. Um. It's hmm. actually a really interesting question. Um, I mean, there are differences. Just. Actually, okay, so there are differences, but the difference is actually a similarity. African Americans are very like, you know, about you know themselves and their culture, and you know they're very into like preserving that, and you know they like to be around their people and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you know. Um, and that's one of the things I would say about Nigerians as well. Like you know, Nigerians usually gravitate towards your like Africans. Where no matter where we are, like I have friends who go to college in Russia, and you know the five Nigerian people who find right. themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Will find themselves and blast some wandy coal and eat some suya like wherever they are. So that's the one thing I would say. It's not a difference. It's actually like a similarity. It, it is a similarity. I wouldn't say there was like a major difference. Okay, let me ask you this because a lot of times, well, I'm in property management, mm -hmm. and at the community, one of the communities I was working at, we had a lot of Africans there, mm -hmm. and they used to just go off on me and the staff or whatever telling me, you Americans this, you black Americans that, you guys are so spoiled and you just doing this because I'm African and they just say that you guys are cheap and all this mm -hmm. stuff. I'm like, dude, is that just like, yeah. Well, I know, you, I know you can't speak for them. Yeah, but, but you have to remember that, you know, I say this all the time, people are so, and are, are so surprised. I mean, up until a couple of years ago, Africans were, were racist as well. Like my grandmother mm -hmm. is still racist and she's black. Um, Africans have, but it's because of the um, perception that the media has portrayed. The same way, and I feel like this is done intentionally, the same way, you know, when we portray Africans here, there's a stereotype. Right. You know, right. in, in, in Africa, there is a stereotype of African Americans that are portrayed, and I don't think that is a coincidence. Mm -hmm. I actually think that's very in intentional. Mm -hmm. And, um, Split everybody up. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like it's because of African American, uh, uh, sorry, Africans think that African Americans are the way they're portrayed in movies or in films or whatever. And obviously that's not the case. You know my but. best friend possibly <laughs> Nigerian. Yes. But he was born I think BC, BC was born here. Yeah, but anyway, so I was in New York, right? So the Nigerian dude was hustling like the little um this is my first time in New York. He was hustling like the little the bus ride. 
you know, like you go to New York, you probably like the big two layer buzz and you go know, via tours and this stuff. Right, right, right. So, 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 they was like, it's $45. And I was like, eh, I don't want to pay that. I'm good, bro. He's like, come on, it's 45 like, You sound basically like, no, no. Because they to buy it. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, that don't sound right. Like, $45 to ride a bus for like an hour. Like, <laughs> nigga, like, Martin, it cost $2. What's wrong with you? So I'm like, I'm good, man. I'm good, man. So he was just like, get that to my fist. So I was like, I was like, what? Like, get that to my fist. I'm like, hold on, hold on. Hey, man. So he was like, he kind of got, got kind of a little confrontational or whatever. He sounds like, kind of dismissing me off. And I was like, I said, nigga, I fold your ass. Well, I said, nigga? Well, he popped. He put, fucked up like, I am not a nigga. I am talking to you like, you know, Americans talking, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, well, let me straighten you out, nigga. Like, I'll fold your ass with ass in here. And man, right off the deck his ass, his other friend came in like, y'all, no, y'all stop, y'all stop, y'all stop, y'all stop. He fine, he fine, you go, you go, you go. I was like, y'all don't stop, you go with me, but that shit got, damn. <laughs> Sorry about that. Lord, Technical difficulty. Yeah. He used to wear it. Yeah, I ain't used to wear that. I'm still getting used to my, 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 my robes. I'm trying to go de Americanize myself from colonization. Uh-huh. But yeah, so as we get back to that awkward moment, mm-hmm. that was my bad experience with racist, revert. Was that reverse racism? I don't know what to call it. Is it inner racism? Is it like. Intra racism. Yes, intra racism. Intra racism? Yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. I don't even know if it's racism. Right. You know? But when I said nigga, he mm-hmm. uh, he popped that. That was obviously like a. Yeah, I mean, older a lot of Africans don't want to feel. Yeah, they have themselves as being black. Right. Yeah. Right. Like no, because they think they're yeah, so because you, of the you perception want, that they have. Actually, you was the one that nigger him. You nigger. <laughs> 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 you, um, you, 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 you niggered him before he felt like, damn, it's like the white folks gotta be uh, mm-hmm. you know a nigga, like, black guy called you. Like I said, like, no, I'm mm-hmm. saying, like, man, like, you know, I was trying to be polite, like, you know, I'm good, man. And he was like, and then you went to the N word. I'm like, nigga, what? You know, like, <laughs> when Africans try to mimic, um, like, Africans who've never, you know, been to America or, you know, try to mimic Americans or African Americans. That's what they typically do. Hey, nigga, nigga, what's up, man? Nigga, nigga. That's like, that's like the stereotypical. Well, because oh, a lot of black people say the word. You can say uh-huh. nigga like 50, 11 times. Mm-hmm. This whole time. Just talking in general. Mm-hmm. That's the word we use. Yes. It's like a term of endearment. <laughs> it's like a term of endearment. Mm-hmm. But, okay. of course, they don't get yeah. it like that. You can't say it all so the time. When y'all, so, back in Nigeria, when y'all try to mimic Americans like, hey, no, nigga. No, no, we all. Well, when not everybody. Hello. When people get them together. When people, um, you know, try to, and what we we're talking about before is that people are racist in Nigeria because, well, not racist, well, let's just call it racism, just because of the perception. And I've experienced that when I first came here, you know, when I went to college in Boston, and, um, I actually said to a black girl, I was like, oh, yeah, African, I'm African American. No, I was like, I'm African, African American. What did they say? And she's like, no, I'm, Afri- I'm African American and you're African. There's a difference. Yeah, I remember, like, she walked like, away from me. And I'm and like, this is my first day. Too, like, like, <laughs> like you're African. The African used to be like an insult. Mm-hmm. You know exactly. Because, <laughs> like, I remember in school, like, like, like when like, I moved here, mm-hmm. and he was like, I never really heard the term African booty Which is why like, the where whole did that even come from? Like, you're like, white people tell each other, or you, yeah, like, yeah. tell you, oh, you a European. You know? Right, <laughs> right, right. But that's this why the different. whole thing brought me up the wrong. Like, I was telling my friends, I went Black Panther came out, you know, and it was really, I was like, I'm not wearing African attire to go watch the movies. And somebody asked me, like, how do you feel? I was like, you know, I feel, I feel weird. Like, it felt very, like, costumey. Like, you know, oh, I'm just going to be an African for the movies. And it, it was just like, okay, this is really happening right now. So they're, like, underlying, I guess, weird mm-hmm. tensions on both sides that you can't really explain because technically we all look the same anyways. But, you know, I remember reading a quote about how <laughs> from some Polish dude talking about how, well, you know, in Poland, everybody looks the same. But human nature, we have to try and put somebody over the other. So they started treating brown-haired white people in Poland the way they treat black people mm-hmm. here. Just because it's human nature to want to, 
Probably you know, better. be over someone and oppress, you know, somebody else. It does it's just human nature is what human beings do. That's real. Mm-hmm. Because even like with you know, Europe being like a, you know, it's all white people but mm-hmm. shit, you know, you go move like in places like it's Italian neighborhoods, mm-hmm. and Spanish mm-hmm. neighborhoods, like everybody would click with Look down on Irish shit. people, you know, like you know, British people looking down on Irish people back in the day, exactly. forcing them to come here, down exactly. to New York and stuff, you know, there's it's just it's but you know, some people think just Africa is just one country. You know, so that's and like not that. knowing yeah. that there's yeah. even yeah. white Africans. I don't even entertain that conversation at all. Like Why when somebody's know? like, "Oh, Africa, look, you know, Africa is one country." No, okay. no, <laughs> are they really white Africans? Yeah. In South, South Africa. Africa. Hold on, hold on. They were born in South Africa, but are they really from South Africa? Well, I mean, they're African Everybody. nationality, but not African ethnicity. Yeah, they're like mm-hmm. colonizers. Yes, they are. Yeah. They are colonizers. They trying to get them to fuck about the paint now, ain't they? <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's so crazy, like, how many white people there are in South Africa to the point that they even subjugated people that are actually there. Like, it's, well, I mean, I guess it's the same thing as Native Americans, so, you know, I'm not surprised. Yeah, and, like, how <laughs> the uh, the people, they trying to send all of the Haitians that are in Dominican Republic back, back, to, back yes, to Haiti. Back to Haiti. Like across the street. No, they're trying to send dark skin. Yes, the dark skin. It is the dark skin one. Back to Haiti, Haiti, even though their families have been there for generations mm-hmm. because, you know, they're trying to make everyone in, um, in the Dominican Republic just swirly look. Yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. And then, like, in That's Mexico, cool. the, I remember yeah, like the, the grandmothers, the, kids, them on the guy was telling us how like you have like the light skinned Mexicans and the dark skinned Mexicans and how they're just like beefing against each other. The mm-hmm. lighter ones think that they're better than the darker ones. Mm-hmm. You know, our shit just it's racism is taught. Is mm-hmm. it? Is it? Because the back in the day from slavery, you had the light skinned kids who was daddies was white, so they was like a little bit more privileged and got a little bit more mm-hmm. stuff and got mm-hmm. to do a little more because they daddy was the white man versus you got the little dark skinned one over well, here. I don't think racism is taught. I think human beings are just terrible. I, I think really, racism is talk about it. It is. Kids thing. don't really know. I, I don't kids don't really necessarily talk. know to be racist until they start hearing it from their well, parents. Yeah, but like, like even in situations like we're talking about where you don't have a skin color difference, you know, right. there is still an issue. Yeah. I don't really think that. I mean, yes, I, I feel like we facilitate situations like that, you know. But I feel like human beings are just naturally going kind terrible. of like off the, Yeah, even in Africa before white people came, we were, you know. Um, Although it was not the the same, it was not plantation slavery, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it it was more like an indentured servitude. So there was there was there was something like Plans that. Isn't. Yeah, my my, yeah. my mom's great grandfather had to pay reparations in Nigeria, <laughs> not officially, but to, because they owned indentured servants, you know, and these are all just black mm-hmm. people who look exactly the same. How do they how do they even identify? You know who, yeah. who was a slave and who was not. I have no idea. So, one so. of my coworkers, him and his uh, wife now are mm-hmm. from Nigeria, but um, he was telling me his family was from one tribe mm-hmm. and his, her family was from uh, another tribe. And yes, mm-hmm. even though the parents lived here, be, when they were getting married, he had to send money to the family in Nigeria for them to get married, and they really didn't want them to be together because the tribe where his family was from. They were considered like the women were considered like mm-hmm. horns, I guess, mm-hmm. like all the women there. And then, I mean, I don't know why I'm whispering because he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not, <laughs> but they were like, I'm like, they were having all this stuff and he was sending money or whatever for the dowry and everything, mm-hmm. but they were just taking it like, okay, this wasn't good enough. But I'm like, why are you trying to appease the family there when they're not even here? And then, like, her family didn't want to because he didn't give his family didn't give all the money. Her mom didn't come to the wedding here. Right. And they so had two weddings. They had a traditional wedding and then they had those white wedding, which was the American wedding. Yeah. We yeah, literally, um, I was engaged. Um, I'm not engaged anymore, but in the process of what? doing so, um probably broke up. Um, oh, 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 it's not it's in other words, oh, none of your business. Oh, that's that's a that's a story. Is it? Yeah. Is it? You don't be you don't you, you, can't just, you be just don't be engaged and break up. up. Oh, but that's exactly what happened. We're engaged. We went to Nigeria, actually. We met my family, all of that stuff. And we came back, and we're just not engaged. We're not together anymore. Was it we had something to do with the family influence? Nope. Nothing. You just oh, decided no. that you I didn't them. decide. I just woke up, and I was single. Wait a minute. Yes, I did. What's the name of that song? Body. Body. We got to go take yeah, yeah. That's going to tell the whole story. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because how can you just wake up? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't wake up like this. Literally how it happened. Like, I was engaged, came back, 
you know, my mom was actually mm-hmm. here, came back with us, wedding planning conversations with, with him and everything. And, you know, one day he just woke up and said he wanted to be alone for the rest of his life. Damn. <laughs> so he just got up. Cold. Literally cold. just woke up. <laughs> Nothing happened, no arguments, no fights, no nothing. In the middle of like, and this is traditional wedding planning, like, he's, not he's already gone, he's Kenyan. He's already, had already gone, met my family in Nigeria, like, gone through the whole process. Yeah. And just woke up and was like, I just, I just want to be alone for like, ever. And he was okay with it? I mean, what, what can you, I do? What you do with exactly. It? I mean, but you didn't ask no questions or nothing? I mean, I did ask questions, but I didn't really get any like, reasonable answers, so I just let it go. That would have been enough. <laughs> because it's like how much that would have stabbed him. Yeah, so would have had to have a little bit deeper conversation. I mean, yeah, but you know, there's really when somebody tells you, it's not like oh, I'm leaving because yeah. of somebody else, or I'm leaving because I'm unhappy. There is no conversation to be had if somebody just wants to be alone. Like that's really the re- the answer right there. You know, so you know, move out of my house. Bye. <laughs> and that was that. But I was like, what was I saying? Yes, I was. Why are we talking about traditional marriage and, yeah. and white white wedding? Mm-hmm. So yeah, we were expected to do all of that as well. And, I think there's always two um, weddings. Yeah. Yeah, there are always two no, weddings. And re- yeah. uh, traditional, traditional. And religious. Yeah. People are inter and people they have like the money dance. Yes, oh, that do. was so funny. You know what? It's so funny because um Americans see people do that and think that, oh, you're degrading because it's stripping. And no, I didn't think that because we did dollar dances at my wedding. When you get a shot and you get a dollar and then you dance with the bride or the groom. Well, the with the three money on you? No, we just pay they paid to dance with us. Oh no, but in Nigeria like you're at the oh, wedding you, and man. they're throwing money on you. <laughs> like they're throwing all the all the guests are expected to throw money on yeah. you while you're in your, your groom or dance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and some so Americans saw that. <laughs> no, I don't know some people. How you pay how people paying you to come like dance with your wedding? The bride and the groom. I've been to several weddings. My family, I mean, then other cult, other uh weddings I've been to that I thought that was just of the norm. How many cousins? Yeah, How many cousins? Cultures. Um, quite a few. Negative. <laughs> um, well, we have the Jamaican culture. That's why we had the regular food, and then we had like the oxtails and all that stuff. And at first, my mom was like, "Who serves oxtails at a wedding?" And she was like, "Well, damn, the oxtails and this Jamaican food is the best shit popping." Uh. You got, you know, my fam- my mom's side of the family, then my that dad's is. side, which is their family's from Bangladesh, and everything. <laughs> so we got the. Chicken curry, steak curry, shrimp curry, fish curry. Oh, yes. <laughs> a lot of curry. A lot of curry? Also, my family, like, we, at the end of the day, it's all about rice. Because you're Jamaican and you're, so that's a lot of curry. So my kids. Jamaicans yeah. make good curry, too. Curry goat? Curry goat. I don't, that's a little exotic. And I don't like, I don't like Jamaican curry because it's not, it's like soupy. I like my family curry because they leave out the turmeric. Mm-hmm. They just do curry Ooh. powder. We put turmeric in ours. Ooh. A bay leaf and a cinnamon stick. How come you have never made us any? Because you're in the middle But I will. <laughs> Hold it I didn't know you could cook. <laughs> Hold it to it. Do my kids look like they're missing any meals? They had ribs uh, for dinner on Monday night. Your kids kind of skinny. They like, they should like some big beef. Well, they're, a- they're athletes. They are soccer players. Oh, sh- We got the official email today. Ashton gets the tryout for Atlanta United. Oh, shit. I don't know what like, you're happy. I want to be his agent. Huh? Let me be his agent. Okay. Let me be his like bodyguard muscle like we go around like somebody fuck with. Okay. $10 an hour. Is it? Okay. You're going to cry. Are you so proud you're going to cry? I do. Oh, I am so glad he's mom. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it. You look great now. Current oh, projects you're working on right now. Oh, Single, shit. album. What's going on? What's good? Um, album is out. Two videos are out. I'm mm-hmm. actually just taking a rest. Um, well, no, actually not anymore. I've been taking a rest, but I kind of go back into like performance rehearsals and artist development and stuff for doing performances here in June. Then I go to Nigeria in July and um, August. Then in December I go to like some other West African countries and stuff. So. It's about to be live, yeah. <laughs> so you're resting now mm-hmm. for the busyness mm-hmm. later. Yeah. yeah, and they're kind of like in, because I did take a little bit of a rest and I came back and then I we shot this food operator video, I had to get into rehearsals for that, and then got to rest again and stuff, so, you know, I've been in, I've been ill, so I've been in treatment since November, last oh. November, so I've been kind of, um, <laughs> 
trying to rehearse and stuff and then go back into treatments and then you know so that's definitely been trying stay on your health mm -hmm. take care of that oh yeah that's for me <laughs> you know, I would imagine you have some tours and stuff coming up right mm -hmm. have um it's just really exciting to be able to go back to Nigeria and perform. And I go back and that, that is like just go home, home yeah. and represent. Well, it was interesting to when I went back. Sick. Yeah, exactly. When I went back in December, that was really weird because I had my listening session and uh, I had a listening party and you know I had the Nigerian media and stuff. But you hear what people said because the music is very different from typical Nigerian music, and um, you know I got like a a wide, <laughs> a and varied do, amount of responses. You do your own distribution? Yes. How does that work? Well, in Nigeria, you um, pretty much just pay like a distribution company and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, artwork, you bring your stuff. You pretty much map out all the places that you want to sell your album, whether it's going to be like at the mall or, you know, wherever. It's not the same where you just, you know, put everything on TuneCore or CD Baby and you go to Target or whatever. You kind of have to have exactly. somebody and then go to like map out all the, the places that you want it to be sold at. Yeah, that is. And then, <laughs> and then now, so, so now you lived in Boston, you lived in Atlanta. What's your Atlanta versus Boston experience? Bruh. <laughs> she said, bruh. <laughs> when I came to Atlanta for the first time from Boston, the airport, waiting, you know, outside waiting for my car to come, and I saw somebody in a, in a blue or, I remember, blue or green Cadillac with hydraulics like this in the airport. And I'm like, I am moving to Atlanta. That was when, <laughs> that was when, like, I, like because it. I mean, coming from Nigeria, my only experience with an American town was Boston. So Atlanta was like a huge change. Cool like, shop. it was mm -hmm. when I first moved, I lived in the Atlantic on 17th Street. And mm -hmm. when I first went to go look at apartments and stuff, I was just like, wow, like, there's so many black, I'm surrounded by so many black successful people. Like, I haven't had that experience since being in. Nigeria, right. you know, um, everywhere I turned, there was, you know, and what I love about Atlanta is it's young, the spirit is enterprising, and just being surrounded by, you know, by that is, is mm -hmm. really inspiring. So when I, I was like, yeah, I'm moving to Atlanta. Not only that, all my friends who come to visit me from Boston want to move here. Right. <laughs> who aren't even in entertainment at all. Like my BFF is a lawyer, my BFF is an engineer, and they want to move to Atlanta because of the vibe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is definitely the hard spot. Mm hmm. Well, we want to thank you for coming. Yes, really enjoyed it. One last request we have for you yes. before you leave is we want some bars. Some bars? Some bars. But I'm not a rapper. Hey, man. You just gave us a bar. What was the motto? Whole motto thing? Oh. <laughs> um, Sing something for us. Tomorrow's blue birthday. Sing him happy birthday. Yeah? How old are you turning? Is that a secret? 21. No. 21 Savage. So it's a secret. <laughs> One, two, seven. Okay. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Hey. Happy birthday to you. Hey. Happy birthday, dear. Lou. 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 <laughs> We okay, wish you yeah, yeah. many happy returns of the day. Long life, good health, and prosperity. Hip, hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip, hip. Hooray! Hooray. Hooray. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to do our cheers. We got to do our one, two, three, love, peace, cheers. Okay. On three. All three. Yeah. Love, peace. <laughs>